I've kind of become obsessed with passenger rail recently on my layout. And today I want to show you how I integrated a commuter train onto my small layout. Now before we begin, I want to talk about something all model railroaders need. A good workspace. Specifically, a good desk if nothing else. Now, I do a lot of sitting around with my day job and the YouTube channel, whether it's editing video or working on trains. It has been proven that extended periods of sitting is not the best for your health, and I can kind of attest to that. I get some back issues when I sit too long. So I've been looking for a proper standing desk. So when FlexiSpot reached out to me and said, hey, you want to try our desk on your channel? I jumped at the chance. I chose the Pro Plus Standing Desk E7 and it arrived a few days later. It was extremely easy to put together and I was able to customize it with options like a power strip and a cable management tray. This desk has dual motors and has two position presets for sitting and standing. I cannot stress how stable this desk is. It seriously is. It does not wobble when I'm working on it when it's in the standing position and it can hold up to 355 pounds. It even has anti-collision features to prevent damage or injury. This desk is a total game changer for me. So much that I'm considering buying my wife one too. This desk is the best standing desk I've ever used. None of the other ones I've used even compare. It's also a perfect alternative if you've been looking at Herman Miller. You just gotta go look for that FlexiSpot E7. That's the one that I have. It is the best value standing desk with dual motors if your budget is comparatively limited. Check out the link in the description below to check out FlexiSpot's line of standing desks, including the E7. Okay, back to trains. Like I said, I am going to be integrating a commuter line into my operations today. And I'm going to be using the Chicago and Northwestern 400 passenger set to do this. Now, I'm not going for time period or anything like that. I'm just going for pure operations today. This set comes with an E8 locomotive and five bi-level passenger cars, one of which is a cab coach. A cab coach is a car that will allow the train to operate from the opposite end. This allows for what are called push-pull operations, and the Chicago and Northwestern was one of the pioneers of push-pull operations. This means that the train can be on a single point-to-point -point route, similar to what a commuter line would be, and to reverse its direction of travel at the end, all the train crew has to do is walk to the other side of the train and control it from there. Now, my layout's small, so I will be only using three of the five cars in the set for the actual operation. Let's get started. My commuter operation for this is going to run from the East Valley Industrial District up to West Valley. And the first thing I need to do is send the first train of the day from East Valley to West Valley. Now I haven't put any stations or platforms on my layout yet, so I'm just kind of parking the train relatively close to the areas. I'll probably put platforms on it here relatively soon since I'm loving passenger operations. Next up, the train coming in from the main yard off layout is bringing in some cars. It's just a little runner that runs from that yard out to this yard and is going to do some drop-offs right here for the industries in the East Valley and West Valley. Today in the yard we have Norfolk Southern 1642, an SD40-2 from Kato, and it is going to be running around and doing the switching. The first thing we need to do is grab the pickups for the train, and those are three box cars right here. So I'm going to grab those and take those out and then use them as a handle to pull the drop-offs and put them in the yard. NS 3675 pulls the one car it's not dropping off and moves away so that the uh, switcher can grab the pickups and move them back and put them into the yard.
Meanwhile, up in West Valley, it's time for the commuter train to head back down the mountain to East Valley, and it's going to be doing that push move where the locomotive is in the back of the train. Now you may be wondering what's governing my time for when these trains run. I simply just have a timer, 5, 10, 15 minutes. And you can have this depending on the stop. You can have some stops be longer than others. But if you're going to be doing a lot of switching in between, you probably want to do something like 15 minutes per stop. The commuter train arrives back at East Valley while the switcher is pushing in the drop-offs into the yards so that they can be arranged for sending out to the local industries. Once that is done, the switcher can pull the three box cars that are for the train heading back out and get them back there so that it can reconnect and head out. Thirty-six seventy-five connects back up to those three box cars and then navigates the double crossover and heads out. Now to throw another wrinkle in this, I'm going to be doing a maintenance of way train as well, and that's going to be powered by this little Kato steeple cab that's based on the Iowa traction locomotives. And I just recently converted this to DCC. You know I'm going to do a video on that, so stay around for that. But that's going to head out and do a little bit of work over in East Valley, and the train is not going to be able to go over there and do its pickups and drop-offs at East Valley while that's going on, so we'll have to focus on West Valley. This is going to add another wrinkle to the plan because that is where the commuter train is going to, which in this case does have priority. I love this little locomotive. It is a great runner, and it was a bit of a tight fit to convert to DCC, but it still works great now. Meanwhile, back in the yard, 1642 gets the trip to West Valley ready with just a few cars to drop off, heads out of the yard, and then after a quick runaround move to get on the proper side for switching, the train heads out for West Valley. Once it arrives, it starts off by switching out the cement company, bringing the two hoppers out of it to place the two new hoppers in. Now while it's doing this, it knows that it is on a time limit and it's going to have to get out of the way to make way for the commuter train that is going to be coming back up from East Valley at any minute now. So the commuter train has officially left from East Valley, which means that the local switcher needs to park and get out of the way while the commuter train is stopped there. So it grabs the two hoppers that it's there to pick up and then places them temporarily on the track for the cement company and then it'll go and park itself out of the way on the lumberyard track. It should not be too long of a wait for the commuter train to head back out so the train's just gonna sit and wait. However, while that is all going on, 
The little maintenance of way train is all done over in East Valley and is able to head back to the yard, which means that the train can come back and start switching out East Valley when it's able to. Short while later, the commuter train departs from the town of West Valley to head back down to East Valley, so 1642 can get back to switching up there in West Valley. So this is the longer of the two stops. When it gets down to East Valley, it tends to hold there for a while, so it's got a bit of time to finish up its switching before the commuter train comes back. And the only thing it has to do is switch out the lumber yard and grab its pickups and head back down the mountain, so it really shouldn't be here long. Once everything is done up in West Valley, the train does a long shove back down the mountain to the East Valley yard where it will go ahead and put these in the yard after a quick little runaround move and then go over to East Valley to switch those industries out. The commuter train is heading back up to West Valley, so the track that it was on is free for doing that runaround, which is going to make things a lot easier on 1642. So it go ahead and it does the runaround and then is able to park these cars on track one in the yard. Now 1642 can back up and grab its East Valley drop-offs and head over to that area of switching. Now that is on the double track mainline section of the layout, so it's going to be able to switch without being obstructed by the commuter train. If you're going to have commuter trains, it's always a good idea to have double tracks so that you can have a train just rolling by right as you are switching without anything going on, just like you see right here. It makes it a little bit easier to do switching maneuvers and things like that if you're designing your layout. Since the train is unobstructed by having to worry about the commuter train, it can get to work and start switching out all of the industries. And once it is done, it can take its pickups back to the yard for a train to come pick up later. The train arrives just as the last commuter train is heading back up to West Valley. It stashes away its pickups on track three and then it is done for the day and can go park on its own track.
Lastly, the commuter train can head home to its own yard somewhere off layout. Adding passenger operations to your layout can be a fun way to add another challenge to your layout operations. I know I had fun doing this. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.